Hi everyone, this is All About the Gyro, and um, welcome to vlog 24. And unusually, I am not at my dining room table or in my comfy blue chair. I'm actually sitting in the rig. So, just wanted to do this quick vlog and discuss uh, two things. First, um, What's going on with me, specifically? Um, late yesterday, my mom in Tampa suffered a heart attack. She is in cardiac ICU right now. Um, they have found a blockage that they are going to be removing later today. So um, if you don't see me around for a few days, um, understand that that is something that I have to pay uh, close attention to. And uh, <clears throat> I do have the ceiling fan on, but it made me look a little dark. But um, the second thing that I wanted to, to talk about is the 10 hours of Suzuka. Um, the support was tremendous. Um, in time slot three, we were tied for second for the cleanest team on circuit. Uh, we were only defeated by Donkey Bop Racing. They had seven incidents the entire 10 hours. So much, much respect to that team's efforts to um, get the car over the line. And they had a pretty high place um, as well. But... Um, the 10 hours really opened my eyes to some things and it kind of gave some reaffirmation on how to approach endurance racing, that being the correct way that we have been doing. So if we were to look at it from an analysis point of view, if you look at all eight cars, um, I didn't see a single McLaren in any of the, the time slots I raced in or watched. So I can't really make a judgment about the, the Maca. There were a, sh a few Fords. Um, in time slot one bottom split, the Ford was actually second. So the Ford was fast enough, put it that way. Look at the Audi in the Lambo. The Audi is a great sprint car, but in a lot of the races I saw as the race evolved, the Audi started losing, losing pace. And the BOP really, really did a number on that car, I think, as well. Um, so understandable that it was popular in VRS, but for the long distance events, eh, not so much. The Lambos were out in full force. I still think the Lambo is the number one car overall right now. But it was a little bit temperamental for some, and it revealed itself when track temps got to 40 Celsius and up early on in the race, um, even earlier than our modeling at Mountain Trout Racing Concern and Team Mad, when I did the modeling work, um, that surprised me um, as well. So, yeah, the lamp, I would say, is pro was probably... For the endurance part, it's in the, the top tier of cars I would want to drive. Um, I know if I wrote a set for it, we, we would not have the temperamental issues. Then you had the Ferrari. Um, I privately thought the Ferrari was going to be the dark horse car. And in... In some degrees it was, and in some 
it wasn't. Um, it really depended on setup. So the close set gearbox on the Ferrari definitely helped that car around Suzuka because of the acceleration. Um, and I saw that both in VRS and in the 10 hours. But the setup kind of all over the shop as well. Um, and that's to be expected. It's a newer car. I think now that this full season is going to happen next season, 22 S1, the Ferrari is going to evolve into a much more mature car in terms of setup. Now you'll be able to get more pace out of it. So definitely potential. Um, I would put it right at, I would say, tie for third uh, with the Porsche. The Porsche is a car that is on the ragged edge. If you drive it well, you're going to be wicked fast. But there's no margin for error. Um, and that's what happened with Team Mad. Um, poor G um, Jarrett lost it in 130R, had a tank slapper. I had a tank slapper. Um, also as well it's it's a demanding car to drive around suzuka for sprints that's one thing and paul webster yesterday raced the 10 hour setup in vrs and got a podium out of it so we know the car is quick but it's that long run pace that afterwards has left me more questions than answers uh, in terms of endurance racing, because I'm looking at the six hours of Watkins, Watkins Glen when Matt and I raced the Porsche around and had a very good result versus the 10 hours of Suzuka where the Porsche was the last car I ever wanted to drive there. Part of that is different circuits, different mentalities, but I also think part of it was track temperature uh, played a huge role in this. So that leaves the, the two front engine cars. Let's talk about the Merc. The Merc is broken. Um, the number six car in our split raced a Merc, and they raced that the heck out of that car. Like they, they deserved to be P7. They ended up, I believe, P8 because they had a fuel strategy issue. They had to come in and do that extra stop, and then the tires are knackered and it got passed by the 232 car. But outside of that, the Merc, frankly, was borderline non-competitive. Um, and that's very, very sad because the Merc had no BOP. That right there tells you the whole tale of the tape. And then I saved the best for last, the BMW. The BMW, absolutely rock solid to drive. And driving that BMW really gave me an awareness of when, as we go into next year, which I can't believe I'm talking already about next year, but it's week nine. So we have five weeks before the new season starts. Schedules are already coming out. Um, the VRS provisional is already out, and it looks to be a banger of a schedule. It's really given me pause in terms of how to approach a race in, in what car. Because that BMW on paper should not have been as good as it was. But that car, and I'm not one for superlatives, as you know, on the channel. That car was magnificent. Period. Magnificent. So, so that leads me to uh, my last thought about this. Um, this week, you may you may see me stream tonight. Tonight being Tuesday, but from Wednesday to Monday, just be with everything going on. Um, I am going to be away and uh, make sure that I am responsible. Um, 
and do that adult things. Um, so yeah, that's about it. But as always, my friends, take care of yourselves, take care of one another. God bless.